question is, what then is consciousness? We're using that word a lot. Yes. And you said that consciousness is all around us. It is, it, 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 it's related to the zero point field. Correct. What is consciousness to you? Often, people talk about, you know, this new idea that consciousness may be at the base of reality. Well, if you look at definitions of consciousness, it's not very useful neither. It says it's something that has to do with self-awareness, right? Becoming self-aware. What's important in that self-awareness understanding is that there's something that resembles a feedback, right? You knowing you are you. And uh, as I wrote the physics that described these fundamental laws, uh, these fundamental principles of, of physics, I realized that the information, and, and it was already in the philosophy that I, was, that I had developed, but it, it showed up in the equation, that the information is, is circulating uh, in feed-forward feedback structures. And so, so that you can think of this Planck field, which is an electromagnetic field, uh -huh. this, this zero-point energy field, um, as bits of information. And this is exactly how I wrote the equation. That's why it's a holographic equation. And, and you can think of the bits being exchanged between the field and the surface and the interior of particles. And as you write the equations for this, it starts to make, uh, to, it starts to look a lot like a feedback structure of information through the universal network. So in other words, the universe is feeding information to itself. Exactly, and that's how it grows. And that's how it becomes more and more complex and highly organized. And goes on. Exactly, it's getting wiser. The universe uh, is getting wiser and wiser. Yes. Right? But the other <laughs> Hopefully. thing... Hopefully. But the other thing is... <laughs> you've, uh, you, you've also said that time doesn't exist. In the realm of consciousness, time is an illusion. Yes. Um, and you've suggested that consciousness is going back and rewriting itself. That's right. So, it, basically, the information, what we call time, is a linear set of information along a specific vector of space. So let me say this in a more simple way. No memory, no time. If you can't remember what happened just before, you don't know that there's a linear function of time. You don't have evolution. So I changed, I, I modified Einstein and I'm sure he's okay with it, but I I changed the, the, the wordy coin, space-time, to space memory um, because it's more fundamental. Uh, memory is required for time to exist, for evolutionary systems to exist. So I, I start to realize that maybe in this plant field of information, we're leaving information as we're moving through space. And we're basically like like we put information on a hard drive in the magnetic field medium of a hard drive, we're leaving information on the Planck oscillating field of space-time, on the electromagnetic field of space-time. And that's what we call our memory. That memory is not in the brain. I actually wrote a paper on this. It was my first paper in biophysics a few years ago. And it, it just got cited by a very, really good team of... of uh, as a biophysicist in, in the Netherlands and, and it got a lot of press but basically it's saying that consciousness is not in your brain but your brain and your whole body is like a bio oscillator antenna tapped into that field of information so, so basically information is on the structure of space and in each coordinates Think of each coordinate as one Planck second, which is really, 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 really short, right? It's like 10 to the minus right. 44 seconds, right? And, and, and just, and can you give us perspective of what that looks like? In our prior conversation, you spoke about how the Earth is going around the Sun, right. but the universe is expanding, so the Sun is moving. So yes. technically, we are moving through space like this, in making a spiral. A spiral. Right. Yeah, and like after a year, we're like billions of kilometers away from where we were a year prior. And we've left information on the structure of space, each one of us, 
along that path and that's what we call our past that is our memory imprint on the structure of space which we're entangled with because everything is connected and all the protons in your body are connected to that information now, now, now here's another question where does my consciousness end and your consciousness begin oh that's a good question if consciousness is also between us, right? isn't it all connected in some way? It is, but each coordinates in space-time is observing the universe from a different perspective. If I put an object between you and me right now, you, or, and, and I don't know, we have like what, like 400 people in the room? If not one of us is seeing this object from the same perspective, every one of us because we are in different coordinates in space-time are seeing a different part of this object we're all gathering different set of information so although we're all part of the same consciousness flow of information we are all in our feedback structure feeding a different set of information that and all the combined sets of all the coordinates in space-time produce the reality we see so if the universe is self-aware, is conscious, yeah. and we are some of the most sophisticated creations in the universe. And we, and we all are individualization, right? Because we're all gathering different sets. Right. So we all look a little different because the universe is organizing in the feedback, is organizing your body a little different than me because you're feeding the universe a little different set of information than I am. So we are just a highly organized, a highly organized bit of the universe That's where right. universal consciousness is expressing itself. That's right. You're like, a, you're like the structure of space-time extending itself and feeding information back to the whole. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a very interesting way of, of looking at it. Yes. Now, Einstein, Einstein mentioned it. I mean, he approached it in some of his statements. What, uh, what specifically did he say? He... Uh, object are not in space, but they're an extension of space itself. Wow. Is there a way we can tap into this consciousness? And is that what intuition is? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, well, you're... So that's what I was saying earlier is like, you're making a distinction between you and consciousness and there's none. You, you are tapping your consciousness, what you call your self-awareness, your consciousness is the tap you're tapped already but you can increase the amount of information flow you can increase your influence on the structure of space i i call it you know vacuum engineering you can you can create a larger tap to have a larger influence on the structure of space if you become aware that you have that ability that you can connect with the space so 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 how would you do that? Well, the equation says that every proton in the nuclear of every one of your atoms, and you're made out of 100 trillion cells, each cell is made out of 100 trillion atoms. So there's a lot of those little guys, okay? It's very advanced, it's very complex, it's remarkable. It's remarkable, like there's a miracle happening every billionth of a second in your body. I, there's a billion, billion chemical change occurring every second. I mean, a million cell division every second. It's remarkable. So all this is happening, right? And the equation says that each proton is connected to all other protons in the universe, that all the information in the universe is present in each one of them. So if you actually want to know about the universe, where do you go? Inside yourself, right? So we are constantly putting our attention outside ourselves because that's what we learn to do. But there's other techniques to help you bring your consciousness inside yourself, right? And if you do that, you can get more and more conscious of the deeper layers of your existence because you think of yourself as one thing, but you're made of all these billion trillions of things. And you become aware of them, you go deeper and deeper in them. Eventually, you can get deeper level of information about the rest of the universe, about 
your consciousness about how you are like the root of you right which is much deeper than the personality and and everything else maybe that you've developed throughout the years.